Okay. So, oh my goodness, Natasha Jesse. I, I, I got to <laughs> read her bio. And I know everybody else will start streaming in. So, good evening, everybody. You guys know I am Life Coach LaWanna Radcliffe. I am a life coach and a deliverance minister. I help people to heal from narcissistic abuse. So we have the beautiful, the lovely Natasha Jesse. She is an author, a public speaker, a, and a woman of deep faith. With years of experience across various businesses, she has always been driven by a passion to help other women navigate their journeys of self-discovery, healing, and spiritual growth. Natasha's journey has been marked with remarkable opportunities, including being featured in Family Circle, appearing on the Ricky Smiley Show. Lady, she was on the Ricky Smiley Show. And have been highlighted in multiple <laughs> online interviews and articles. Her true calling <clears throat> lies in guiding women through the challenges of life, especially those who are remarrying ding, 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 or facing empty nest syndrome. Natasha's life and work are deeply rooted in faith as she believes that every struggle, no matter how painful, holds a purpose. Amen. Through her platform, she shares uh -huh. her experiences and insights, offering encouragement and practical advice to women seeking to live a God-filled awesome. life. <laughs> yes. All right, everybody try to Try to mute yourselves, please. <clears throat> Natasha's journey is a testament to the power of faith, resilience, and community. And she's committed to helping others find their purpose and strength through God's love. I love that. That was amazing. Love that, Natasha. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for being on. I mean, Natasha. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for having oh, me I'm, on here. I'm so, I'm so honored. Oh, my goodness. It, it, I'm telling you, you're an answer <laughs> prayer. You're such an answer prayer. Um, I've been doing Flourishing Heart since early, since actually January of this year. And the, the Lord led me to create this group to help women to heal from narc abuse. And um, yes. I mean, I didn't know what it was going to be. But I fully trusted in him and I knew it was geared towards women. And I wanted right. to have a person on who has gone through a, a woman who has gone through narc abuse, who loves the Lord. And she used her love for Lord for the Lord and her strength and purpose to come out of that and to share this incredible testimony with others because it's so, so important. And we don't see that many stories about women, especially black women, coming out on the other side of narc abuse and finding love again. Um, I don't really see it on right. social media. Um, I'm sure it's happening because we know how the Lord restores. Um, I just want to briefly, before we go into the questions, I just want to tell you ladies that I met Natasha years ago. She interviewed me Seven years ago, ladies, on YouTube, when I was just a coach, I was saying earlier before I started recording, I was a little lukewarm Christian. And I was looking at that interview because it's still up on YouTube, guys. And I was like, oh, my goodness, we didn't know what we were going to go through. She was already at that time married to a narc. I was going to marry one some years later. And it's crazy how wow. so many things happen and then your worlds collide. And we reconnected only a few weeks ago. Just I just happened to be on TikTok. And Natasha was like, wait a minute, I knew her. That's LaWanna. And we just <laughs> reconnected all over again. And so I was just like, oh my goodness, she has to come speak to the ladies at Flourishing Hearts. And like, once I found out what you were doing, your life, your update and all that, I was, the Lord was like, it's her. I said, yes, it is her. Cause when wow. I met you, I was just like, you're a ball of light. You're a woman of God. Your heart is Thank so you. pure. You have such a brightness to your spirit. You. And so it was, it was a no brainer to ask you to come on. 
And I know the Lord reconnected us for a special purpose. And I know that you're going to minister to the hearts of the people that's going to watch this because your story is a story wow. of restoration. And people need that because that's what we all need that men and women, right. Natasha. And I'm just so grateful that the Lord healed you, restored you and blessed you. Yes. So would you like to say anything wow. before I go into the question? <clears throat> oh my goodness. I have such a tender heart, y'all. So if y'all see me wiping yeah. a few tears, just yeah. overlook. Just overlook. It's okay. I am, again, I am so honored. I'm blessed to be here this evening, to be here with you, to be here with everyone that's here this evening. Um, I ask the Lord just to use me as he will. Um, whatever I need to say, let me say it with ease and, and communicate it properly. And yes. um, I'm just, when we met, I never thought that I would even share with anyone other than, you know, my mom, I only told my mom a couple of things, mm -hmm. you know, and my best friend, I told her everything, mm -hmm. you know, but outside yeah. of that, I never thought thought that I would be on a level to where I'm headed right now, but I know that there's purpose and pain. And so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for it all. Amen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, none of us are on this journey <laughs> just like by happenstance. This is, you know, the Lord is, is guiding our steps for sure. And I know that me hopping on um, TikTok at that particular time, because I'm not on there that often, that was definitely God like, yeah, you guys need to talk. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so we're going to jump into the question. So we're talking <laughs> about, for those who are just joining us, we're talking about a restored love. Like with the Lord restoring your heart and bringing your kingdom spouse in. Sharon says she doesn't know why her camera is not working. That's, all, that's okay, honey. Don't worry about it. Long as you get here, that's that's really the most important thing. So Natasha, so you said your first marriage was a narcissistic one. And many of the ladies on this call and women watching in the replay, you know, we've gone through the same thing, same path that you was walked. Um, what was your first marriage like? Oh, yeah. Well, my first marriage, and, and and I need to, to let you know that this is my third. Okay. And my last. <laughs> Amen. But this is Amen. my third marriage that I'm on. Um, okay. My very first marriage. Yeah. My very first marriage, I was 19. Oh, you a baby. I was 19 years old. And honestly, yeah. I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was. I was a baby. I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted in life. You know, I didn't really know how to go after my dreams. I, I, I didn't know. And so um, what ended up happening, everything that um, I learned from that first marriage that I fell short of and didn't heal from was carried over to that second marriage where I started to learn what a narcissist was. Mm. That first marriage, I, I joke about it. I say that was just a trial run. I didn't know any better, you know. But with that second marriage, um, it was it was it was difficult. Um, I it was like going. We were okay. Let me start over. We were married for a total of fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And throughout the majority of the marriage, I was always reminded that I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Um, I wasn't I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't smart enough. Um, if you know, if I was pregnant at the time, you know, I had to stay home. I was on bed rest. Well, mm -hmm. if we went somewhere to get something to eat, well, that woman's pregnant. She's working. Why can't wow. you work? You know, um, 
Mm-hmm. It was difficult. Um, it was as though he just shined a spotlight on me at all times um, to show me of my shortcomings. And, you know, when his mother was was mothering him and his siblings, you know, she was able to, to work, come home, mm-hmm. cook, clean, you know, um, why, why are you tired? Why do you feel like you need to rest? Why do you need to take a nap? Why can't you? It was, it was, it was tough. It was very, very difficult. Um, let alone throw in being sick from stress and having these different ailments just manifest in your body because you're not knowing how to look at it properly. And you're just Mm -hmm. taking and owning all of the blame. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't know what you don't know. Amen. It's true. It was, it was, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I mean, many of us watching stand with you because we went through the same thing. And it's, um, I had a client last week and she was pregnant at the time. The narcissist actually talked her into uh, quitting her job. And um, when she was pregnant, Mm -hmm. he would starve her and the baby. Um, that's how oh, you know, he was. Yeah. Yeah. When I heard oh. that, that, you know, oof, I had to, you know, be the coach and help her through. But I'm just like, that broke my heart because that's one of the most heartbreaking mm. uh, stories, testimonies I've ever heard of narc abuse. Like you're starving your pregnant wife. My God, yeah. what you went through in 15 years oh, too, I think about it. Um, Natasha, how did you know um, when the Lord was saying, you know what, daughter, it's time for you to get out of this marriage. Like, how did he lead you out of it to know, like, you know, I can't take this anymore. Like, what was what was that like? You know what? I I have to say that I'm grateful that I serve a God of many chances because he had to speak to me twice. Mm. The first time that he spoke to me, I remember I was taking a shower. <clears throat> that was my alone time because at the time I had three small children. And I asked God, I was like, you know, if he's not meant for me, just give me a sign. Mm. Give me a sign. And I had got a call from our landlord. We lived Mm. in apartments. And I happened to live there before I had married him. So we had a relationship, you know. And Mm -hmm. she was telling me, she said, Natasha, she says, listen, honey. She says, I don't want to get into your business. But I got a fax. Show you how long ago this was. (laughs) She said, I received a fax. Um, Your husband is trying to get an apartment with just him on the application. Neither you nor your children are on the app. And I was like, what are you you, you talking about? She says, he's trying to leave, honey, is what I'm trying to tell you. So I was like, God, I just got out the shower. I just just said this prayer to you. And she calls on the phone. And I immediately called him. He was at work. And He was like, I was going to wait until after Christmas to tell you. So that was my first sign where God was like, it's time. But because of the way that I found out, Mm -hmm. because it wasn't in his court, um, and I approached him with it, That's when he decided, well, you know what, maybe we can work on it. Because at that time, I was a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. Um, We we agreed that my baby girl, you know, she wasn't going to daycare until she could speak. Um, So I was at home. I was at home. And and there for my two older sons um, going to school. Mm -mm, So sorry. No, it's okay. Are you able to see me? Okay. Yep, I am. Mm-hmm. Um, going to school, picking them up. And um, the fact was, because of that, he was telling me and trying to talk me into giving him another try. 
because mm-hmm. I told him, well, if you're leaving, then we're going to move out of this three bedroom apartment. I'm going to move into a one bedroom apartment. I got to find a job. I, you know, me, it's just me and the three kids. We can share this space. I can have my room, yeah. living room. Like I already made preparations, but yeah. he made it to where, no, you're not going to do that. And so I believed him. I trusted him. Mm. Yeah. He says, I'm going to move with you. You don't need to, you don't need to do this. You can't do this by yourself. Are you crazy? That's, mm. you know, you can't, you can't do that. And I listened. Mm-hmm. I listened. And so the second time, fast forward, um, after, after I, I had to get a hysterectomy, um, he got a vasectomy. Um, and then I had knee surgery. And I had all of this done within a year's time. And I had complications in my healing. So I was on bed rest a lot. Um, God showed me that he just didn't love me anymore. It was, it was difficult for me to ask for a glass of water um, because I couldn't go upstairs to the kitchen. It was hard for me to, um, you know, tell them, tell him, hey, you know, my phone bill is due. I'm not working right now. Can you help pay this $40 bill? Um, That's not my bill. Ask your mom. Wow. You know, Um, so that was when I learned I I was going to start doing something while Mm -hmm. I was in my, in in the uh, recovering in the bed. And that was along the times when I met you. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was like, I'm just going to get this show um, I wasn't making any income from the show, but I was getting exposure to help right. me because at that time I was doing marketing. Mm. And so yeah. I did that because I had to prove to myself that I wasn't lazy because that's what he was classifying me yeah, as. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. I had to prove to myself that I was strong, that there wasn't nothing wrong with me. So Despite all of the the healing and the complications that I went through, I pushed, pushed, and I saved face. Anybody else that saw us in public, they would have never known. Mm -hmm. But I knew that once I got to that healing point, it was time to go. I had to go. But I knew right then and there, I I felt as though I couldn't. I felt that he still had that, that grip on me. And that I wasn't going to be able to succeed without any type of uh, financial support or mm-hmm. whatever he was providing. And definitely yep. for my three children at the time. Mm-hmm. So God was mm-hmm. very, I would have dreams. I would, I would just have like nightmares and dreams mm-hmm. and I would get palpitations and I would just, everything would just crash around. Um, yeah. That's how I knew. I was like, it's, I got to go. This isn't mm-hmm. healthy for me. Yeah. So. so so once you realized that, did you file divorce? Did he? How did the divorce come about? He said that he was going to file. He said he was going to put child support on himself. And that shocked me. But it was taking mm-hmm. him so long to get it started. So I was talking to my mom. My mom is from old school way. She was like, no, nah, we're going to go to the lawyer and lawyer up right now. Right. We're, right, we're going right. to go take care of this right, right now. Right. And so right. that's what we did. That's what we did. It didn't yeah. take him long to sign it. And later I discovered the reason why he was so quick to it was because he was cheating on me. And so he was with the mistress at that just, time. And yep. They always so it have a easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we already know Narc's relationship pop. They go, whoop, they could have been with you 20, 30 years, had 10 kids with you and meet somebody yes. the next day and just move on. Oh my gosh. So, wow. Yeah. I'm just, I'm taking it all in. Even the ladies right now in the comments, they're I just know. like, ooh. It's a lot. 
We could feel your heart. We could feel your heart. And we're, you know, we're sorry that you suffered like that because that really is suffering to be so vulnerable like that. And you're like, can you give me some water, food? Can you pay the bill? Like, clearly I can't do that. Oh, the the pain of that. I'm I'm sorry you went through that. Um, When did you find out that he was a narcissist? My mom. Actually, wow! You know, my mom, she started now. So my mom, and probably like a lot of moms on here, once you tell mama you don't like somebody and they didn't do you right, mama's never gonna like him again. You know what I mean? Mamas are loyal to their mm-hmm. children, and so I shared with yeah. her, and later discovered that in her first marriage, she married a narcissist, mm-hmm. and so. She was sharing with me some of the things that he would do, reminded her of her past relationship. And that's how I started to learn truly what a narcissist was and that I was just accepting it for 15 years. Mm. So well, what was it like to even discover that? Did it, did, was it like, oh my goodness, now it makes sense? Or was it like, oh, that's horrifying. I was married to somebody that's a narcissist. What was that like? The best way that I could say, I felt relief in a sense that it wasn't me. I felt relief knowing that I'm not the problem. Exactly. I felt relief that Mm -hmm. this is something he has some unresolved trauma, unresolved problems that he hasn't owned up to. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he's taking it out on me. So Mm -hmm. I was, I was relieved. But I was also hurt at the same time because these were things that I took on and I I bared it all, Mm -hmm. you know, in front of my children. And it was difficult to try to build myself back up from that. Yeah. Yeah. It's devastating because you got to, like you said, you had the physical stuff going on with your body and because 15 years of abuse. The, the mental stuff, yeah. you're ruminating, you got the the heartbreak, the betrayal, and right. then you got to take care of your kids and figure out to work and support yourself. Right. And I mean, nobody right. really knows the gravity of being in a narcissistic marriage, relationship, family situation until you're in it. Right. Uh, Maya, we're going to go into, we're going to, any questions that you ladies have, um, once I ask these questions, we're going to dive in with those questions. So hold on, because uh, Maya wants to know what was his relationship with his mother like. But I want to stick on this first because I don't want to forget these questions and because they're excited. They're like, we want to know all this stuff. And I'm like, yes, we're going to figure that out <laughs> uh, because that's true. Like, they're like, you know, narcissists have the men typically have, you know, mothers who are enablers or narcissists themselves. So we're going to get back to, we're going to circle back to that. Um, what was your healing process like, Natasha? And how long was that process like? How, how was that? Your oh, the healing journey was, was long. It was a long journey for me. Um, the start of it was journaling. I had to start journaling because I bottled everything in, mm-hmm. you know, and and I was moody. It, it made me moody and, and I would feel guilty. You know, I would snap at my kids, not meaning to, but I would right, snap right. on them because I'm, I'm stressed out. Exactly. You know, mommy's over here. I got to figure out how to how to pay this bill. I got to call this company again and ask for another extension. I have to, you know, figure out, you know, am I going to give blood this week or am Mm. I going to wait till next week? You know, I had to figure out so many different things. And so it wasn't until Mm. I learned about journaling. Yes. I had to jot it down. How, how am I feeling? And actually look at it instead of just trying to keep it all inside. 
Mm-hmm. Because I was trying to mentally trying to compartmentalize and try to figure out a route, you know, but I couldn't do that internally. I had to write it down. Mm-hmm. And then my mother, I love my mom so much, y'all. <laughs> my mom said, well, baby, because I, I went to her and I said, Ma, I said, I just, I feel like I can't win for lose. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like every time I try, I get knocked back, you know, when it came to love or you know, that many times I went to her because I needed help or whatever. So it's like, well, maybe it's the way that you're thinking. Mm. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. the way that we think, what you think about, you bring about, you mm-hmm. know. Amen. She was reminding me to always keep God in the forefront of my mind. And if I do that, then everything else will fall in line. Yeah. Amen. So, Mm-hmm. The healing process, it 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 was it took a lot of tears, a lot of crying myself to sleep at night. It took a lot of praying. I worried. I worried a lot. Mm-hmm. I worried a lot. Mm-hmm. And trying to figure out, you know, I can't do both. I gotta choose one or the other. I gotta mm-hmm. either pray or I can worry, you know. Um and just really having that isolation, that solitude, so that I can be better for my children, if anything else. Yeah. So it was it was it was a long journey. Hmm. How as as you were in your healing journey, how did your relationship with the Lord deepen during that time? Oh. Versus like versus where you were with the Lord when you were married to the North. Uh. Now, what's funny, it's not funny, but it is funny. When we were together, we we went to the same church and we both had ministries at the church. Wow. You know? uh, and I will never forget, he was teaching um, Wednesday night Bible study. And it was on Proverbs 31. I will never forget that. <laughs> and he was talking about the virtuous woman. Uh-huh. And had the nerve at at home to talk about why can't you be like her? I will never forget that. Ooh, you know, it's it's so many narcissists in the church. That's another topic for another day. But it, they, <laughs> oh my goodness, there's so many of them. Lord. Somebody but said, yikes, relation. not another narcissist in the church. Yes, Michelle, a lot of narcissists in church. Yes. I was, my, the, the narcissist I was married to was a deacon in the church and he did the sound, the graphics, everything. Keisha said, my ex did the oh. same thing. Um, They also were saying that your mother was an angel. She was a godsend. She was just, you were yes. so blessed to yes. have a mom like her. My mother actually turned on me while yes. I was in a narc marriage. So for you to say that your mom oh, loved no. you and supported you. That's a blessing. It really, really is. Because so many people don't have their parents to go through that with them. Um, That's such a blessing. I'm so glad that you had her and you still do. Because that's that's beautiful to know that you have that. Because that level of support and wisdom, it just takes you to a whole nother level when you just like, mama got me. Okay, so our relationship changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I'm sure it did because you guys got closer, right? Like, you know, sharing all that information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Renee said it seems like to be their new hiding place, the narcs in church. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I, I, I said, that's um, another but for another day. <laughs> They're everywhere. To answer your question, though. Yeah, yeah. They are. So many. Um, my relationship with the Lord, I thought that my relationship with the Lord was strong when we were together, but I was really relying on him to lead. You know, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't fully there, but it wasn't until afterwards when when I felt like I had nothing, Mm. that's when I knew all I had was God. Mm. And when I knew all I had was God, that's when I was able to pour myself and just open myself up and let him in fully. Mm. Beautiful. So it it improved. Ooh. It improved tenfold. Mm. 
It's beautiful. I love that. Because so many people who come out are upset at God. Oh, you told me to marry the Nard. This, this, that. <laughs> and they did this. And it's just like, we have to realize, like, we were hurt and wounded before we even met these people, you know? And so once we get into these uh-huh. relationships, these marriages, then it's just like, you get a chance to see your unhealed childhood trauma, your life disappointments, your oh, yeah. emotional deficits, all that stuff start coming up when you are with them. And then you get a chance to, it's like a mirror reflected back at you. Like, I pick this, like what's going on in, within <laughs> me that I thought that this was a good idea. So yeah, 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 so good. I'm so grateful that the Lord, you got tighter. So how long did it take for you to say, you know what? It's time to date again. Like, when did you know? Okay. I think it's time for me to get back out there on the market. You know, it's time. (laughs) You know, I, um, it took me a while because I, I enjoy, I enjoy my own company. You know, (laughs) I enjoy, I enjoy my own company. Me and my kids, we would just sit together, laugh, watch TV and play Uno and Monopoly. I was good. Yeah. Um, But of course, of course, there were times where, you know, I would get lonely and think about calling and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Been there, done that. I'm not going to go back. Right. But it took me, it took me. It took me about four, five years before mm. I was like, I'm I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I'm ready to be in a relationship again. You know. So Yeah, four or five years. Yeah. It's been it's been two years for me. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you need that time, man. So you do. You, you you know, you need you need that time because the processing, the healing, the purging, the even the word curses that the narcissist planted in. Oh, you're never you're not attractive. Oh. You're never going to be anything. You're <laughs> you. It takes years for that stuff to filter through. And for God yes. to uncover the true woman, the true woman of God that he created you to be, you got to really like purge that old stuff, those lies, really. And really come into oh, agreement yeah. with, with God's truth. How did you know you were healed enough? How did you know you were healed enough to date again? Like, I know that my heart is ready to go out there. You know, I just, I, I was comfortable with me. Mm. I was comfortable enough to say, so well, good. you know what, Lord, if if I'm not meant to be with anybody, I'm okay with that. It was right then when I made that realization. If if I'm meant to be single for the rest of my life, then I'm okay with that. And I was just fine with that. And that's how I knew I was ready. Yeah. Ladies, listen up. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really true. Because if you have like this burning desire, like you're crying. And I'm telling you, before I met the narc, I was doing that. I was just crying myself. I was like, I'm years. I don't know why I haven't met in my husband because that was my second marriage to the narc. So I was just like, I understand. And then Satan was like, I got the perfect one for you. I was because I, I wasn't okay with being <laughs> by myself. I just wanted a man. I was right. like, take loneliness away. Take this. I want to, you know, post my right. stuff on social media. You know, I'm sitting here right. you know, looking at <laughs> rom-com romance movies, crying, took my I want somebody to give me flowers. And you know, Satan was cooking up the narc in the back. He was like, You gonna see you gonna meet him in about a year. And I'm like, Satan got me. So okay, I love that. I love that. So I'm like, you know, y'all know I'm a jokester. I'm always gonna act silly. I'm gonna crack these jokes. So <laughs> What did the Lord say to you, Natasha, about dating before you were like, all right, I'm going to get myself out there? Because the Lord is always speaking to us. He is. And one of the things that he told me is I need to be detailed. I need to be detailed Mm. because in the past, now with, with my ex-husband, the second ex-husband. 
I said, I want them. I want them tall. I want them dark. I want them fine. I want them to have some smarts about them. And that's really it. Make good money. That's it. I didn't go into the personality. Mm. I didn't go into the relationship with my family and his family. I didn't go into, you know, if I'm sick, how he would feel if I'm sick and how I would Mm. feel like I didn't go into detail, but I went straight into prayer. Mm. I went straight into prayer and it wasn't until I was comfortable being with me. I was, I was accepting if I was to be alone for the rest of my life. Once I got to that part and I was ready to start dating. God was like, well, come to me first. Yes. <laughs> let's let's yes. sit down. Yes. What you want? Yes. Let's talk about this. Yes. All right. And yes. I just really had to have that open line of communication with God because I always had him on the back burner, even though I felt that he was all in and throughout my life. Yes. I would still put him on the back burner because yes. I got it. I'll figure this out. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. I'll drive. You you take the Mm -hmm. back seat. Yeah. You know, I got your wheel. And but it wasn't until I was like, I I can't do this without you. Mm -hmm. I'm getting older. My children are getting older. My children, I'm setting the 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 role, I'm setting the model for them and what they're gonna expect out of their future relationships. I said, I can't. Mm-hmm. I cannot do this to them because I knew that it was going to, it was going to harm them one day mm-hmm. if they mm-hmm. didn't heal from it, especially if I didn't heal from it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh girl. I love it. What a journey. My goodness. <laughs> I'm like, yes, this was so well thought out. I love it. Um. Oh my goodness. Okay. So before we get into how you met your incredible husband, your kingdom spouse. Did you date <laughs> for a while, like different guys, and then you met him? Or <clears throat> did you say, oh, I met him? Like, how how did, was your dating like? Because the ladies, <laughs> feel, we all, I told you, we all feel like the dating pool has pee in it. They got cigarette butts in it. <laughs> it got old drawers in it. The dating pool is just nasty. So how did you navigate yeah. through those crazy waters? It does. It got <laughs> bugs in it. It, it has all of that in it. Right, rats in it, all kinds of craziness in it. <laughs> I um, so I did go on a couple of dates. Okay. He's walking in now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> He's been getting home from work. Husband, <laughs> <laughs> but oh um, I had um, I, I did go on a couple of dates, and it just the, the the you know you could just you could feel that there wasn't an equal exchange. You could tell up front what was in the forefront of their mind, and I wasn't with it. You know, and I was like, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like I just, you know, it's like I'm at this point. I'm tired. Like I just, thanks for the movie. I had fun. Right. Right. Yeah. Thanks for but, the movie. Uh, I had fun, but uh, I'm okay. Yeah. I know. I I totally get it. So. How did you meet your kingdom spouse? <laughs> Y'all are gonna crack up at me. <laughs> to the good stuff. <laughs> so <clears throat> it was during COVID, and <laughs> I was at home feeling cute or whatever. You know, and I said, you know, they got this Facebook dating thing. I'm going to create me a profile. I'm going, I'm going to try it. I'm going to check it out. I checked it out. I I went through all my photos to see which one were the cutest ones. Nothing too revealing, you know, something little, 
got a little something to it and posted it. And um, I had got some hits, you know, some, some, some men responded. A lot of men were like, well, send me a full body pic. I'm like, ah, he's not the one. <laughs> exactly. Not Definitely not, not interested. He was the only one that had substance. He didn't ask me for no photo. He asked what my goals were. He asked mm. what my dreams were. He asked what did I like reading? What type of music? Like it was substance, yes. you know? And then he was like, um, it just, it just felt good. Just having a full fledged conversation, not those one liners. What you right. doing? W-Y-D. W-Y-A, where you at? You know, it wasn't any of those oh types of gosh. conversations, but it was like full of substance. And then um, he had asked me, he said, um, I would really love to see you, but I know we're in a pandemic, but maybe, you know, we can video chat if you're, if it's okay. If not, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. He never pushed me, but I, I went ahead and I downloaded the, the app and I put my, <laughs> I put my phone on my desk and we connected and I kid you not for the first minute we was just looking at each other smiling we didn't say a word we was just looking at each other just <laughs> and I'm y'all see how bright I am I start blushing <laughs> yes <laughs> I start blushing yeah but it was it was and, and from that point on we exchanged our phone numbers and we just, you know, good morning. You know, I pray that God covers you today, you know, sending prayers yeah. and covering and just, I was like, yeah. thank you, God. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You know, now I do need to go back one step before mm -hmm. we, before um, we got on Facebook dating app. On December 31st, I actually wrote a letter. I, I wrote a letter to God mm. for my New Year's Eve. And I went into every detail. Wow. Every detail that I wanted in a kingdom spouse. Every detail. I folded it up. I thanked God in advance. And I put it away. Forgot mm. all about it. Put it yeah. away. I meet this guy four months later and then it hits me after two months. That's the man that I wrote in my letter to God. Every detail, oh, every crazy. single detail that I wrote down and we have been inseparable ever since, ever since. Oh my Even God, the, la the ladies, January the ladies in the comments are like, beautiful, I love it. The ladies are like so excited. Oh my God. All right. Oh. So first of all, I'm over here like, I'm over here like on the wings of love, just the two of us. <laughs> <together. laughs> I'm over here like, okay, because I love a good love story, especially when God is in it. Uh, I love it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we know yes. that when God puts two people together and they're just getting to know each other and everything is flowing, the enemy got to come in and throw like a little, he got to try to throw a little jab here and there, <laughs> you know, to try to mess things. Cause that's oh, yeah. the point, godly unions. We already know that he tries to mess, mess up godly friendships and all kinds of stuff. Anything yes. that God puts together, he tries to come against it. So while you guys were dating, were there any like spiritual attacks that you guys were going through that you were just like the enemy trying to like separate us or something? Yes. Yes. Listen Lord, up, ladies. Listen. This, <laughs> so he actually had an ex fiance. Okay. And um later I discovered that she she was a witch. I know. And I remember one day I had went over to his apartment 
And out of nowhere, there was just a gang of flies. I didn't put two and two together. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I was like, where are all these flies coming from? He's like, I don't know. He says, there, there were no flies here. And I'm in the apartment helping him to kill these flies. Yeah. Because they're everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I had never seen so many flies in my life. My Later goodness. he tells me, and then I'm like, oh, okay. Now I get it. I, I, I get it. She, um, she would try to call whenever we were together and he didn't answer the phone once. And I was like, no, it's okay. You can, you can answer it. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. And he let her know that, you know, he's with me and that they're no longer together. Um, they were already no longer together, but in other words, he was letting her know, don't call me no more. Mm. So, There was also there was also an incident where I had caught COVID, mm -hmm. and so he was like, "Baby, just call me anytime, anytime. I don't care, night or day." Da, 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 yeah. and, and I would call. I was like, "Why isn't Why isn't he picking up the phone?" Yeah, yeah. He must be talking to that girl. <laughs> no, right, right. Hey, what you want to go back she to? Your ex now when I'm over here sick. Yeah, yeah. No. You know what I mean? No, when no. I can't get up, I don't have no energy. I right. can't get up. I can't go nowhere. Right. You know, I'm quarantining. <laughs> yeah. But one thing that I I love about him with that, he says that there are no secrets. He's like, baby, my 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 code on my phone is this. My password to this is here. Yeah. This is here. Mm -hmm. Here. If at any moment you have any doubts come to me, talk to me. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it's a doubt about another person, let's, let's clear it up. Let's clear it up. He says, I love mm -hmm. you. He says, everybody that you were with before didn't know your worth. I know mm -hmm. what you're worth. He says, I would be a fool to lose you. And so, oh, I love so that. he just so beautiful. Showed me. Showed you. He was more than just lip service. You know, he was he was about showing that action. And, and that was something that I hadn't experienced before. And even though I had healed before we met, there were still those things that would still try to trickle over from the past. Yes. You know, yes. What, yeah. what, what if I'm not pretty enough? I wonder what she looks like. Maybe she's prettier. Maybe, maybe. And he would always, he's like, if you have any doubts, talk to me. Yeah. And he says, we'll, we'll yeah. solve this up. We'll nip this in the bud right away. Mm -hmm. So I love when he a man is. Has, has full transparency because that is so, so, so needed. And that's actually a red flag when it's not the right person, when it mm -hmm. is a counterfeit, when it is a narc, because they hide everything and they are incredibly secretive. So for him to have been like, oh, yes. this is my ex and she got issues she got going on. And we already know there's so many women who are in witchcraft and they'll they'll find out, they'll be stalking their ex's page and see, oh, you got somebody new? Let me send some monitoring spirits with flies and all. They People do stuff yeah. like that all the time. So the Lord put it in my heart to ask about how did the enemy come against your union while you were dating? Because people think that it's just everything yeah. is perfect. It's beautiful, but you're going to go through things because the enemy does not want godly unions. We already, we can see the divorce rate. The enemy wants to link godly women right. and men up with narcissistic partners so we could be all defeated, sick, and have a premature death. And so mm. we can't do what God called us to do. A lot of people after narcissistic marriage, they become narcissistic or they become very bitter and angry. And, oh, my life should have been like this. And, and right. I'm not just like, I already... I already finished you off and then they on to their, you know, 1000 victim. So that question about the enemy, right. like we got to really think about that because just because you met your kingdom spouse do not think that the enemy will not come against your union while you're dating, while you're courting, because he will. Right. And we have to expect that That's when you right. got two godly people coming together to do God's work on the planet, the enemy is like, no, they going, you know, try to take my kingdom out. No. 
So yeah, he and in the end, right. he knows how healing and therapeutic and restorative God godly love is to your soul. I mean, for him to be transparent like that, yeah. so many men are not like that. So I just love that for you. I love it. So how did you Thank know you. this you. is the one? <laughs> this is my kingdom spouse. This is the man that I want to marry. How did you know? Everything, ev everything just made sense. Everything lined up from mm. me meeting his family. You know, I love everyone in his family. Everyone loves me. Everyone in my family, children included, love him. Mm. Um, he would talk to and treat my mom, my stepdad, like his parents or, you know, if my children are having some issues, he's like, hey, let me, I'm, I'm going to call up Zach right now. I'm going to talk to Zach, you know, because yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grandmother now too, you know. Congratulations. I have a one-year-old grand. Thank you. You know, he's like, I need to yeah. talk to him, you know, about what to expect, you know, as a new dad and, you know, just there's, there's, there's no boundaries. So I or you listen no big deal. We're going to mute that. No, I had to mute that. That's okay. Go ahead, honey. Yeah, so I just, every, everything, it just made sense. It made sense, but I also asked God. And if you remember when I first told you when I was in that shower with my second ex-husband, and I asked God, if this is not meant to be, let me know. And then almost immediately I get that call. Mm-hmm. Be honest, I was a little nervous in, in, in saying that prayer because I was like, everything's lining up. I don't mm -hmm. think I want to ask that question. <laughs> right, right. I think That's I want to just keep things in the Yeah. You know? <laughs> nice and even. But <laughs> I did. <laughs> but yeah. I did. I did yeah. because I realized I, anything that God has for me is better than what I could want for myself. And oh, once I came okay. to that realization, Go ahead. That's that's where I wanted to stay. That's where I Amen. wanted to stick. Amen. If that meant yeah. that this man that I'm falling in love with is perfect, it seems all the way around. If he wasn't meant to be with me, then God got something else better for me, and I was yes. okay in accepting that. You know? Yeah. But I yeah. said that prayer, and he's still here. <laughs> Everybody you know, asking for Sierra's I'm, prayer. I'm, they better I'm be just... asking for Natasha's prayer. <laughs> they better be asking what? for her prayer. <laughs> they talk about Sierra prayer. Like, how did you get Russell? What was the prayer? I'm like, they need to be asking about Natasha's prayer. I love that. Oh, man, oh. that's so cool. Your kids get along, the families. Oh, that's such oh, a such a man. blessing. It really, really is. Because, oh, my it goodness, is. having a new marriage, you have it's challenging enough. But then when you have the families, they blend together well. That's chef's kiss. Okay. So how did he propose? Okay. So <laughs> I will never get tired of sharing this ever. Yeah. So um, so in December, I, I had got sick. Um, I had... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw part of that comment. <laughs> um, I got to, I actually had got caught RSV from one of the grandbabies. Mm. And then I had bronchitis on top of that. So um, I was in the hospital for a little while, for um, a little over a week. Mm -hmm. And when I got home, you know, I still had medication to take. So I was still kind of a little loopy, you know. But I noticed that he was on the phone a lot, and which is okay. Yeah, I trust him. But I did notice he was on the phone a lot more, and he was texting more, and he was getting up, up and down, <laughs> out the room, going outside on the patio yeah. to talk. And I thought about it. I was like, you know, it's, it's okay. It's whatever. You know, I, it's time for me to take my meds and go lay down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so. He was like, babe, he says, we got to go to my company's Christmas party. Uh, he says, it's, I'm, I'm in Dallas. I'm in Dallas. 
by the way. Uh-huh. And so um, he says, it's, it's all the way like in Fort Worth side, which is where we were from or staying was about 45 minutes away. But where he worked was like 10 minutes away. Mm. Says, we got to go all the way over there at the Fort Worth for the party. I was like, that doesn't make sense. He's like, I don't know. He says they're gonna do some kind of presentation or something. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. he was like, yeah. So he says, and if you don't want to go, I was like, well, no. You went to my company party. I'll come to your party. You know, I'll just, I'll make myself look good. You know, because mm-hmm. I wasn't a hundred percent. And we got dressed, and I remember him looking at me. He says, "You look beautiful." I was like, oh. Thank you, because I sure don't feel it, but thank you. Okay. So we're getting in the car. (laughs) We're getting in the car and we're driving. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is far. Right. (laughs) And it's at a at a movie theater. And I was like, the company party is at the movie theater? That's (laughs) weird. He was like, I don't know. He was like, it's some kind of presentation. I was like, okay, so y'all are probably going to get some awards or something. So we walk in the lobby and he tells the man, yeah, we're here for some kind of presentation. And the guy was like, it's it's in theater six or whatever number it was. And so we go in and the, <laughs> the lights are down and they're showing on the screen um, coming attraction. The trailer. Yeah. And so we he grabs my hand because it's, it's dark in there. We sit, we sit down, find a seat, and um all of a sudden it stopped. The trailer stopped, and then on the tra- on the screen, you see like someone's computer desktop. He's like, Oh, I guess they're gonna start the presentation. But they were having trouble. And I mm-hmm. leaned in, I was like, Man, this company. I said, this company party is whack. <laughs> he was like, I said, are you sure we're in the right one? I said, do you recognize anybody in here? Yeah. He's like, I think I recognize somebody down there. And I'm like looking around. Everyone got jackets on. Everyone is looking straight ahead. No <laughs> one's leaning over. No one's talking. No one's doing anything. And then all of a sudden they start this trailer. And it's TikToks of me and him. And I was like, what is happening? Mm. So I'm thinking in my chair. (laughs) I'm thinking down in my chair. I'm creative. I love this. I'm looking around. I'm like, what is happening? So it ends, they turn the light on, he grabs my hand, and we walk down to the landing in the theater, and he says, well, I guess you know, it's about that time, and he gets down on one knee, and then all of a sudden, everyone is standing, and there's cameras flashing, and I said, yes, I start boo-hooing, and then all of a sudden, I see my mom, then I see my kids, then I see some co-workers, and then his mom, and his, like, everyone started coming out. It was it. one of yes. the most, I've never, ever in my life. Oh, would my have God, you're going to make me tear up. It to be like that. I was, I was, I was a big baby. I was a big. Oh, That's so beautiful. of tears. Hmm. Ooh, you and make it was just, that's so I mean, beautiful <laughs> oh my gosh I got it on my TikTok I gotta see it that's so beautiful it was, with oh each person goodness, that I girl. saw I just grabbed their necks I was just squeezing oh. necks just so happy and like y'all all knew Y'all all knew. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And that's so like, beautiful. That's the reason why. He said, that's why I kept getting up. He said, yeah. I, was, I was planning it. I was like, okay, I all love right. That. <laughs> that he was just like, okay, mom, okay, best friend, kids, co workers, everybody. I love that. You know how he done nice made a flyer. 
And the women, like, you know, some of them, like, I can't even get a text back because so many of these men are so lazy. They don't put a thought into anything. And this man was like, I'm going to do it in a movie theater. I'm going to have stuff on the screen, family. Yeah. So creative. You thought that? That's so unique. I was just... Oh, my goodness. It was. I was just still just beautiful. Speechless. Uh, I'm still speechless when I think about it, you know. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm very blessed. Yes, that's beautiful. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I know the women are feeling hopeful hearing this (laughs) because I am. Oh my gosh. How was the wedding? (laughs) So this is what we did. We went to the Justice Justice of the Peace. Uh huh. We went to the Justice of the Peace. So we haven't had our official wedding. Okay. Um, but we just knew we 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 wanted our our marriage to be blessed. So yes. We 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 went to the Justice of the Peace, but um, we are planning. We are planning to have a wedding. Um, I haven't picked a date yet, just because life be life and yes, things yes, happen. Yes. Yes, you know, yes. so it's we're in the process of trying to figure out how we're going to have the wedding. Awesome. But, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm a softy, but like I don't really cry for wedding stuff. But hearing that, how he thought that out, and you weren't feeling well, I know you was feeling better after that. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "What?" Uh, say, say that one more. I know you were feeling better after he proposed. Oh, because it's like, what's this <laughs> storm? <laughs> yes, put it on, put it right here. I was I'm up. No more. <laughs> I'm not sick I was baby. up all night. You can only imagine. <laughs> and then waking giggling. up, right? you're waking up like, I love, it. oh my God, love it. That's so, so beautiful. God, God, yes, Lord. I love that you wrote down the details. See, you are so obedient to what God told you to do. And that's why he brung him too. You didn't just say, oh, I already know in my head what I want. Pew! Like you took the time to write that stuff down and it really, really (laughs) matters. Ladies, it does matter. Like when God tells us to put those details down, it's not just, yeah, of course you want to be attracted to the person, but let me tell you something. You could have a gorgeous, fine man and he could be saying the most evil things out of his mouth, but you're not going to think, oh, he's so cute. No, you're going to be thinking like, (laughs) what kind of heart he, you know, he has, does he really love me? Does he care? Is he my best friend? Like that stuff really, really matters. So I want to, this is my last question, and then I'm going to open it up for the ladies to ask any questions that they may have. So, Natasha, what okay. advice would you give to single Christian yeah. women who have gone through narc abuse, just like me, just like other some of the women in the group, and women who will be watching this in the future online? What would you say um, as far as the dating process, like healing and really opening their hearts for love again, because this is not, we already know narc abuse is not just a regular breakup and, oh, you had a divorce and boom, y'all went y'all separate ways and it was hurtful. Narc abuse is your whole soul being decimated and then you're like, Lord, restore me. And then you have to go to the Lord to heal you and bring you back to life. And that's a process. So, so many women feel hopeless actually to tell you the truth um so what what would you say to those women Mm. wow i would say (laughs) the best advice that i could give is is to get lost with god Mm. yes and the reason why i say that is when you come to the realization, and I said it earlier, that your wants, your desires are nothing in comparison to what he wants for you. You know, I don't know if you all seen that clip. It's an old clip. I don't know. I don't know what kind of game it was, maybe baseball or something. And 
there was this woman sitting in, in, in the audience and they gave her like this stuffed animal and then they came back down and they tried to take it and she was trying oh, to fight it. That. And yeah. it. I saw that. You've seen that? Uh-huh. And, and and then finally, the, this big old stuffed animal, you know, if she would have kept holding on and clutching on to that little animal, she would have seen all the the, 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 bigger, the bigger gifts that was available for her. Amen. But it wasn't until I realized I had to learn who I was again in Christ. I had to learn who I was in God's eyes. I had to learn how to forgive myself. Yes. I had to learn how to love myself. I had to I had to relearn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And the way that I did that, I did that with journaling. I did that mm-hmm. with prayer. I did that with committing to myself. This is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Because I have, to, I have to do this. Once yes. you get that attitude that you have to do this like you have to breathe, Yes. That's when you start seeing those changes come into your life. That's when you start feeling more confident. That's when you start standing up more straighter. That's mm-hmm. when you start looking in the mirror and saying, you know what? I look good today. Yes. Because I had a hard time doing that. Mm-hmm. I had a hard time looking at myself in the mirror. You know, I had a hard time accepting my gifts. Yes. Because I was told that those gifts were nothing for so long. Mm. But it wasn't until I was committed and say, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to have, that's what I want to. If there's anything that is in my grasp, if there's anything that's in my heart that's not pleasing to you, let it be displeasing to me too, because I don't want no parts of it. Because mm. you've shown me how much you love me. And once I realized the power behind that, that's when God started showing up and showing out and showing me different parts of myself to show me how far I've come, Mm. you know, and, and, and I stopped, I just, I had to, I had to just stop with, with, with the, that negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. Because that negative yeah. self talk wasn't really my voice; it was his voice. Yes. You know, the ex. Yeah, I had to yeah. learn to deprogram myself from him yeah. and cut those soul ties from him. Yes. Oh, and it was yes. hard. You know, but it's the the thing of it is, is that mm. it's doable. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mm. never would have thought seven years ago I would be in a marriage with a man who's five years older than me who makes me feel like I'm 17. I've never thought that I would be married into a family that loves me as if I'm their blood. I never thought that I would have my family, my mom, call it. Mm. Where's my son-in-law at? I'm like, wait a minute, what about me? <laughs> so love it. That's awesome. You yeah, know? love me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 such a lesson, but it it the work doesn't stop. Mm-mm. And that's what's something I really want to drive home. It doesn't stop. Do I have days where I feel inadequate in some things? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But the difference is, I, I recognize it. Amen. I recognize it, and I can cut it off a lot sooner. I, I can recognize, oh, that's, nah, we're not going to do that today. Nah, we're not, we're not going to do that. You know, I keep my Bible right here on my desk. Mm-hmm. I'm at my desk where I work. Right here, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yes. and I will yes. randomly say, God, what is it that I need to meditate on? Because I don't feel good. I don't feel right. Something's off. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Or I'll just just sit and meditate. Yeah, but it takes constant work. It takes yes. constant work. 
that it's worth it. Yes. Yes. My goodness. I hope I answered your question because I get so passionate about that. You did. My gosh. Wow. I'm I'm sitting here like. I mean, what a powerful testimony. Just like what the ladies are saying in the comments, like it is powerful. Like I didn't even know it was this powerful or deep, but I I knew that what God had, um, he had something incredible for these ladies today and he, and myself because this is this is so needed, Natasha. It's not really openly spoken about finding love again after narc abuse and actually meeting a person that God had for you originally. So many women and men are just like, I don't even know if that's possible for me. All right. So we have questions. The ladies are like, hello, Luana. Um, we got questions. Oh. So <laughs> Helen has a question. Hey, Helen. <laughs> hello. I am sorry I came half halfway no, but i have a question yes for the beautiful I, lady yes I, natasha yes um how do i i am i am just beginning to walk this walk uh after being with the uh, narc for 34 years and mm -hmm. so i am struggling a lot but i i think the biggest thing that i'm facing as a hardship now is I, I don't have words to pray and I read the Bible like uh, you know the, the, today's devotion and all that but I feel so dry mm -hmm. uh, I, I used to wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to pray I still wake up like my alarm on my biological body by itself wakes me up and I'm just pulling the bed sheets because of course they put me in so many medications. Mm. I'm a trictiline, methocarbamol, like I'm on so many meds because I was suppressing the the emotions with the life I lived in because I believe this is the marriage. You are born again. Your husband is also born again. He's a Christian. You're coming from the same country. And so I really believe that this is marriage and you're suffering together. Mm -hmm. But uh, it reached a point where I was like, I need out. This is not true. So how do you, did you from the beginning just, you know, be close to the word of God as you picked up your Bible and you're saying like, I have to meditate. Or did you go through a process of how do you find yourself again to be close to God? Because I feel very dry. Wow. Wow. I'm so sorry that you're having to go through that, but I understand that, you know, what I would say at the beginning, well, I've always had a relationship with God, but there were times where I would try to silence God, you mm -hmm. know, because I got it. I don't, I don't feel like talking to him right now. I mean, it's mm -hmm. because I was letting my situation overtake me. And it was hard for me to look beyond that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I had to start doing when I was doing my healing process with journaling, I would make a list of all the things that I was grateful for. Making that list of I'm grateful to have my life. I'm grateful for my sight. I'm grateful that I have my senses, my lens. When you don't know what to pray for, I pray I, I I list out the things that I'm grateful for. And that just kind of naturally turns into a prayer because it gets all those things that you're so thankful for in the forefront of your mind, you know? And even so, if I don't know anything else to pray, my mom told me that my grandmother told her that she would get the Bible and say, okay, God, what do you want me to think about today? It would just randomly open up the Bible mm -hmm. and whatever her eye caught, mm -hmm. that was the message or something that she needed to focus on. And usually for me, it's been this case. If I, if that paragraph doesn't have anything to do with me, if I keep on reading, there's going to be something that's in rel related to what it is that I need to hear right then and there, just going in with that faith. 
knowing mm-hmm. and expecting, having that expectancy that God has something for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would just encourage you when you're w- waking up at three in the morning and you can't think of nothing to pray about to say, God, I just thank you. Mm-hmm. Just thank you. Yes. If that's your whole prayer, just God, I thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's so good. Thank you. And you know what, too, Helen, the dryness, I was talking to my best friend about this actually a few days ago, and we were just talking about a lot of times when people experience that, that's a call to go deeper in God. It's like, you know how God says we go Mm -hmm. faith to faith and glory to glory. And sometimes our faith could hit a plateau when we've gone through so many different things. And so it's like we built it up to this level. And we've been walking with the Lord for a certain amount of years. And God says, okay, now it's time to go deeper. It's almost like you got to get to the bedrock of God. You got to go to like the deepest, deepest parts. It's Mm -hmm. always more to learn. It's always a reconnect. We're always reconnecting with him. And so I feel like like what Natasha said was beautiful. Gratitude, opening up the Bible, whatever's there, Holy Spirit is going to speak to you and just speaking to him from your heart and praying that he nourishes you because that's really, really important, honey. I just feel like even though I know it's new, you're coming out of this marriage, the divorce and all that stuff, but God is going to take you to a deeper level of faith than you've ever experienced. And you're just feeling like this because you're about to go deeper. So yeah, Um, I love that, Natasha. That was so good. Just randomly picking the Bible and like, Lord, going, he going, he going to give me a word. He going to give me something. Um, okay, I got so many questions. That's right. <laughs> right. Hold on, Keisha, because somebody had a question right after, <clears throat> right before you. Maya says she has a question. Um, and then I'm gonna get to you, Keisha. Maya, honey, you can ask your question. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hey, honey. Um, I really. I wanted to first and foremost say that I really appreciate your bravery and your genuineness in um, articulating uh, Mm -hmm. your experiences and your truth. And it resonated Mm -hmm. so deeply with me Um, while you were giving account of, I believe you said it was the first marriage, the narc. And I I really, it it was like one of the most pressing (laughs) questions on my mind when you were explaining it, because I I was able to draw parallels between that situation with your NART with mine. And Mm -hmm. I know um, in my marriage, his mom, she played a really, really big part in the degradation of our marriage. So I wanted to know, I was curious to know if the narc ex, if there was any toxicity, any mommy issues that he had or, you know, and I also, and I also heard you mention that um, your kingdom spouse who you have now, that his family openly embraces you. They love you. They accept you as one of their own I wanted to know if that was the adverse reaction of the ex-narcs family. Mm. Good questions. Yes. Yes. Great question. My girls is my girls is hitting on. I love these women. They're incredible. (laughs) So yes, to answer your question, um, it was actually the second ex. That first one, I really need to stop saying that that first marriage when I was 19 was the trial run. Because it was a marriage, nevertheless. It just, I'm not going to count it. But that second one, um, <laughs> he did. He did have mommy issues. Um, he was a mommy's boy. And um, she, she enabled him a lot. Now, thankfully, she was in Philly while we lived in Texas. So I didn't have to have, you know, a lot of interactions with her. But one of the things I can say is after we divorced, she apologized to me. 
she said that she's really sorry that he did what he did to her. You know, um, we gave her her first and only grandchild. And so um, that that hurt her. And, you know, that was sweet for her to say. Um, as far as my relationship now with my in-laws, I mean, I, I, I prayed for it. You know, I, I legitimately prayed to have the relationship that I have with them. Um, it was part of my very long and detailed letter that I that I had. Um, but it's again, there's there's work. There's still work. You know, we're all humans. You know, he he may decide to leave his his pants on the floor. And I may be, in, you know, out of spite, walk over them just because I'm like, I'm not your mom, you know. <laughs> There's things uh -huh. that we still work on, uh -huh. you know, but there, everything is work, work outable, right. you know, because it's you, you focus on what the problem is and you focus what the solution is. And it's not that the person is the problem. Right. Right. Mm hmm. That's so good. I really, really like that. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, I told y'all, Natasha going to give y'all the real. She's not going to give you the cookie cutter, sprinkle dust, love. She's going to tell you the truth. That's why she's here. Um, I know Keisha has a question. What's your question, Keisha? That's my hey, I, Can you guys hear me? I got this on my I kind of... Um... <laughs> I have like a, a a little comment to like um what Helena was saying. I know a lot of times right after this you have to take some medication just to kind of get the the mind together. Um, but working in this field, some of that dryness too come because some of the a lot of the medications in this field. Sorry, my mic just fell, but I'm gonna hold it like this. <laughs> a lot of the medications in this field, it it turns off a certain gene expression that kind of um kind of give that disconnect feeling a little bit with God or with faith and prayer. So that is something that they have, you know, shown in evidence. But as you decrease, like as you heal the soul, like continue the soul healing, you should be able to um, have your doctor taper those medications, like safely taper different ones. And then that numbness won't be there. Mm -hmm. But um this is really great. And then um, Natasha, well, I, you kind of already described like some of the flags that well, some of the things that was kind of like at first concerning, but how long um, did you guys kind of like court for or how, how long was that? Or did you mention that? I didn't mention that. Good. You was listening. <laughs> we courted for, we courted for about a year. Okay. Or about a year. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any more <laughs> questions, Keisha? You good? You good? All right. Any more questions, ladies? Ask her whatever you want. Because we don't meet too many women who've met their kingdom spouse. So this stuff is really important. I was actually like, once I heard about Natasha, I was like, yeah, she got it. Uh, Janice is saying that it's nice that you guys <laughs> record in a year. Um, and then Keisha said, that's good. Narcs like to rush like two months is too long. Yeah, that's true. They do Ooh, narcs yes. they like to rush things. They absolutely do. Matea says, Natasha, I love your bright spirit and peaceful nature. I really look forward to this in my yeah. own life. So you're giving the women hope. Natasha, you really, really are. That's you. giving me hope. I mean, you have me tearing up. Lois says she has a question. Okay, Lois, ask the question. Yes, hi. This is hi. are you seeing? This is my first time. I'm in my car, so it may be a little bit dark. It's okay. Thank you Don't for welcoming me. Yes. <laughs> okay. So my question. So my question is, right, I have been going really in depth into the Bible. I, I read it cover to cover last year and I started it over this year. And I know I read, I think, in the book of, the, of Corinthians. And I think somewhere else, maybe in Romans and Matthew, where they talked about where Jesus actually said, 
Yahusha actually said that if a woman marries, if a woman marries and her husband is not, didn't pass away, he's not dead, then she's committing adultery, mm -hmm. right? So I, I was, I was in a narcissistic marriage. I got, got out of it many years ago and I'm healing and I think I'm in a good place. But my husband is not dead. And so I kind of just said to myself, I'm not going to remarry. And not because of the trauma first. And then when I read this in the Bible, now I'm saying to me, you know what? I'm going to ask Coach Luana about this, you know, because I listen to you. I follow you and I listen to you. And I say, I'm going to ask your take. And um, her, uh, the lady, her, is it Vanessa? I don't want to say Natasha. the wrong name. Natasha. But, uh, <laughs> Natasha. Yes, my Probably apologies. Right what okay. is your take on that? Yeah, so Actually, so so I, that kind of girl, Natasha, that kind of felt. You what? Know, you yes. talk, Natasha. I'm gonna go get my Bible. I want to answer this, and then we're gonna come back. Yes. So <clears throat> that's a great, 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 great question. And unfortunately, I cannot quote a scripture, but I know in the Bible it speaks on if that person commits adultery. All right. That that does give grounds for divorce. And so mm -hmm. um, right. yes, it's the yes, person it that it has mm -hmm. both committed adultery. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Right. But I I I love the fact that you've read the Bible. From yes. Beginning to end. That is yes. huge. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm doing it again. I'm doing it just to make sure, because you know, I just read it just for just to familiarize myself, and then you know, I said, let me go deeper in in it now. So okay, mm -hmm. right? So it says if yes, because it does say unless he puts her, if the husband puts her away for sexual immorality, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so I guess it works both ways for the man and the woman. Yeah. It definitely okay. does work um, um, both ways. And I love that you, you asked this question because so many people feel like that. Well, I'm going to just say, number one, um, God does not bring each and every marriage together. That's number one. There right. are people who have... Right, right. Let's just be for real. He doesn't. He did not bring us together with the narc. All of us who marry narcissists can clearly say that we saw so many red flags, which was the Holy Spirit trying to warn us, saying mm -hmm. that these people are not the ones, but we wanted to make them the one. That's number one. Mm -hmm. So then if you guys look and exactly what Natasha said, if, if that person commits adultery, then yeah, like you get out of it and you're free to marry again because this person already broke the covenant. This whole thing is about covenant. Um, if you guys look at um, Ezra 9, it's talking about how upset the Lord was with his people mixing with other people. He got so mad at Israel mm -hmm. because they were intermarrying with pagan people, wicked people, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Parasites. The he, he was so upset that he said you have to end the marriages and leave the kids. That's how upset. The yes. Is. So if you guys study Ezra 9, uh -huh. that shows us right there that God did not ordain each and every marriage. And sometimes when we mix with people who are not believers, who are not equally yoked, then we are literally coming under a curse because that person does not have the heart, yeah. and the Holy spirit, none of that of God. And so if you guys look at Ezra and I study it, when you get off of here, you're going to see how upset God was. And mm -hmm. so that's why this is, um, this is really, really important to talk about because when you are trying to come out and restart, you have feelings of like, what's going on? But it's really important to study the Bible and God does not want us to get linked to other people because he knows how bloodline curses are. He knows how these people divert us from our destiny. He also talks about the wheat and the tares. We were the wheat and we were married to the mm -hmm. tares. 
These people would not yield to the Holy Spirit. They would not yield to God, no matter what you do. And also Jesus tells husbands to love their wives with a sacrificial love. Love your wife as I love the church. Narcs don't do that. So we actually came into a demonic covenant. So yeah, exactly, Janice. We wanted to make these men the one. And God was like, no, that's just like the whole gay marriage. Did he ordain that? Two men, two women. Some people trying to marry their pet. Some people trying to marry robots. Some people like marriage is just getting you get a marriage. You get some people are just married. This woman says, uh, I saw on TikTok yesterday, she said, I'm gonna marry myself. This mm. is how far, yeah, surely unga ungodly covenants. So we have to really just study the word and really understand and then take everything back to the Lord. But Ezra 9 tells us that he does not ordain marriages. We can even look at Matthew where he talks about that as well and how some men, they were trying to divorce their wives and just because, you know, they could because of the laws of Moses and all that stuff. And he was just like, why is it that? And Jesus loved women so much. He's like, it's not fair that only men can divorce. Because then back then we know that when women got divorced back in biblical times, it was like, well, you're not a virgin anymore. You're used up. And so it was like nobody wanted you. You were shunned in society. So the Lord came and, and he had a stipulation for that. So that was really good, Lois. Great, great question. A lot of yeah. comments. I can you say I am oh, I am Go ahead, Helen. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, oh, goodness. I'm not as fast to type. I, I'm not as fast to type. So I know that I, I spoke to my husband uh, just before he left. And, you know, all the time, my you know, people calling me and my everyone saying that you are born again. You are a Christian. Marriage is until you die. You don't mm -hmm. leave your husband and he doesn't leave you. And you confess. I will love you. Uh, I'll take care of you until death do you part. And so I told my husband, can you rewind? Because you're saying until death mm -hmm. do us part, but you're not doing, you don't love me and you don't take care of me. I'm the one who's carrying all the responsibilities. So why are you removing those two words? You're just putting the last until death do us part. If you're saying that I confess those words, you also confess those words, but then there was also, I will love you. I will mm -hmm. take care of you until death do us part. In yeah. riches and poorest and whatever and whatever. And you are not doing nothing. And I'm the one who's carrying the Lord. And so he's like, that doesn't count. It's only until death do you part, you confess those words. And it's so hard for me because my parents are calling me. They're like, as long as you don't get married. Because now they know that he's <laughs> done all this. He has already done drama to them as well. While they, they've been holding him high and I've stayed because of my parents mm -hmm. I stayed but now they are telling me just don't get no men just stay as a nun you know like <laughs> don't hey, you no, ever no, look no, at no, any no, no, men no. don't you ever think of getting married mm -hmm. but then I'm like but what about the other words you said we confessed in front of God but there are more words than just until death do us part yeah, love, so honor, do those cherish, being faithful, all those things. <laughs> See, narcs try to throw like the the big idea in the trash and then they'll take a little bit out and say, what about this? It's like, dude, what about the whole paragraph before the till death do you part thing? Like, what about the love, honor, cherish, sacrifice, being faithful, all that? Taking care of me with sickness and the health? <laughs> what about that part? So yeah, honey, I would say take all this stuff back to the Lord because the Lord is going to lead you in spirit and in truth. He's going to lead you to that. You have to understand too, um, so many people have doors to the demonic that they're not aware of. And Satan loves to influence our friends and families who may not have as strong of a walk as you. They may have great intentions, but the enemy can influence them to plant seeds in you to keep you in bondage. And so that's why I say, take things to the Lord. You know, your family may be a great family, but you got to take everything back to the Lord. Because just like in my marriage, the first lady of my church, she was just like, I'm like, this man has abused me. He's doing, he verbal this, that. 
Oh, honey, it's okay. Just, you know, you got to stay in it. You got to keep scraping that stuff off. And I said, scraping it off? This man crazy. And people in the church was like, stay, stay, stay. That man threatened my life. And my son's life. Was I just supposed to be like, well, I just got to stay and hope he don't kill us that night? Like, no, I had to get out of that. I wouldn't be alive today. So we have to be really, really like careful about what we take in and what we come into agreement with. Because sometimes it's not even that person that's just saying it is a spirit that's trying to get you to come into agreement so that you can stay in bondage and feel guilty for the rest of your life when God is like, I have greater for you, daughter. I have better for you. Because the enemy tried to do the same thing with me, Helen. He was like, just stay in it. Now you're going to have two divorces and this and this and that. Oh, and I was like, but this man is threatening to kill me. He's inching closer to the closet to grab the gun. So I'm supposed, supposed to sit here and let me just stay in this and sleep with one eye open, hoping he don't come take me out of here. Because he actually threatened that. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he came and grabbed his gun and was walking around the house like, like I'm about to take y'all out. So if anybody was going to tell me to stay in that, no, sir. No, ma'am. Yeah, Keisha, go ahead, honey. We don't, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't All right. hear you. Sorry about that. I don't have my mouth. Can no, you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, and about that, like, in order for people to have a diagnostic criteria of like me being a narcissist, a lot of times that lying, manipulation, which is witchcraft, that cheating, even if you don't catch them cheating, sometimes they're doing like um, other cheating, like even if they're looking and lusting after another person, a woman or whoever, if they're lusting after them, they have already committed that adultery in their heart, like that seed of adultery, iniquity is in their heart. So mm -hmm. one and God looks at the intents of the heart, like He's a judge of our hearts. It don't matter what you say or nothing like that. He goes straight for like what is inside that heart. Now, when that happens, we have to make sure that we're not going to put a man, the covenant that we formed, like God don't always form these covenants, especially in these last days, but a covenant that we form based out of our own emotion, our own spirit, because of other spirits and generational things that influenced us before God's covenant, because that's idolatry. And he, he will never share his glory with another. And Ananias and Sapphire are New Testament, a married New Testament couple that demonstrates what happens when you choose to agree with a fallen husband over mm -hmm. God and his Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And if he done a separation because he had to intervene and enough stuff came out to where a separation had to take place and you seen what was really happening, that fruit, then there's a reason why God had to pull you out in the remarriage. If you, if there, usually that's there. I mean, I haven't really seen too many cases where it's not. People will be like, well, no, no, it's not. Because they get that new supply right away. That, mm -hmm. that person was already on the back burner. And then they were yep. probably still talking with the previous supply. So exactly. usually that is in the mix, even if we are aware or not. But we want to make sure we are not in idolatry because those demons that are inside of them, those are superpower ancestral demons and they mm -hmm. have to steal, kill, destroy. And if they didn't finish that assignment, trust me, they're coming back to finish that assignment. And you mm -hmm. have not just you, but that generational bloodline that they want to completely wipe out and annihilate. It's very serious, mm -hmm. very serious. Amen. I just wanted to say that because the Holy Spirit will always be there to kind of protect us. He'll let us know like, hey, do this. Hey, read this. So we don't have to go based on what everyone's opinions are, like family, friends, because they're going to, everybody has an opinion, but the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. That's, and amen. we have to be in tune with God first. Our relationship with him have to be 100 and then amen. we will know. Yes. Thank you for saying that, Keisha. That was that was amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm yeah. like, go to the Lord first, because the Lord is going to guide you in spirit and in truth. Um, people, sometimes our family are male, well-meaning, but God, it has the final say. So that's that's so true. That's right. Anybody have any other questions for Natasha before we um, close?
Any other questions, ladies? This was a great conversation. I love it. It was really, really, it was, it, I mean, it just gives me hope. So much hope. Any questions going once, going twice? Uh, Keisha said your testimony really blessed her. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Y'all, I have to admit, I was, this is the first time that I've shared it, like I've shared mm. it. And, you know, I had the butterflies and mm. I was like, okay, it's not about me. I kept telling yeah. myself, it's not about me. <laughs> Telling the story about how I got engaged, oh, I will tell that to a stranger on the sidewalk in a heartbeat. But to share everything else, and I again, I know that there's purpose and pain, whether yes. it was to help me to level up or whether it's to help someone else that's yes. going through it and, yes. and to find encouragement. I just, I'm, I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to be here with everybody thank you yes. everybody for your questions yeah this is truly blessing tonight you blessed us and i mean in the comments they're like yes you answered all my questions it was refreshing so where <laughs> could we find you on social media what are your social media platforms how can people reach you i'm going to put that stuff in youtube i'm going to put that information in there but just for for the women okay. now watching how can they find you cuz they're going to they're going to be following you just letting you know <laughs> so <laughs> as of right now, um, business wise, I'm in the process of rebranding. So I don't okay. have any handle to help you with that. Um, I'm on TikTok because if you guys haven't noticed, I laugh and smile a lot. I like yes. to do that as much as I can. So if you like silly things and like to get away from things that are just heavy all the time, I'm on TikTok. Okay. And I think, what is my name on TikTok? Um, yeah, because I'm about to put it Natasha, in the comments. N N Natasha just is. And you'll see, I have my engagement uh, as a pin TikTok on, on my profile. Natasha just is. Natasha, um, J-U-S-T, and then I-S? Okay. Yes. That's her, ladies. I just and put then, it in the comments. And then if you want to follow me on my personal Facebook page, we can be friends. I'm Natasha Jesse. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Somebody just followed me. Melanie. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> so I just I just put that in the chat box so the ladies can follow you. Thank you so much. Would you do me the Thank pleasure you. of praying us out, Natasha? Please bless us with a prayer. Close us. Thank you. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for just allowing tonight to be such an amazing and beautiful night with all of these amazing ladies, Lord. Father God, I ask that you just bless and touch each and everyone in a special, special way in which you see fit. I ask, Lord God, that they are filled with encouragement, with hope, Father God. I pray that tonight gives them a new perspective. And Father God, just have that, that desire to run after you and just to light their feet, Father God. Light, light that path going to you, Lord God, and just blessing them, Father, with um, all of the things that they need, Father God. I ask that you just protect them and keep them safe from the enemy's grasp. We know that he's busy. We know that he's going to try any which way to try to distract them. I ask, Father God, and thank you in advance for breaking strongholds, Father God. I thank you in advance for just hearing testimonies of victory. I thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. And I just thank you once again for allowing to just using me just to, to, to speak and to share my story. All of these things we ask for and we pray in your son's precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That amen. was beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow, Natasha. This, yeah.
you just knocked it out the park. That was incredible. I think I'm, I'm going to be processing this interview for some time to come because it was is I really felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking through you. Like you're going to oh, help so many people. God. Thank mm. you. That's Thank what you. I want to do. Lord willing, thank you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, ladies. Thank you so much, Natasha. We're going to be talking, girl. We're going to be talking. We're going to be catching up. It was so good to talk to you. Thank <laughs> yes. you again for being here and talking to my beautiful, beautiful ladies of flourishing hearts. All right, ladies, we're going to be on next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about something good. <laughs> and thank you, ladies. I love you, ladies. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless each and every one of you. Have a good night. Thank good you. Night. Bye. Good, good night. night. <laughs> mm -hmm.